especially after watching this really stupid movie uh, for that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, was, I, was, I was thrilled when I saw the researchers going on that little boat, deep in the Arabian, uh, looking for this legendary snake. Uh, I grew up and I found that uh, and I was slightly disappointed. But my, still my dream to go to the Amazon was alive and kicking. Um, during my undergraduate uh, course in the University of Kent, I was studying conservation biology. Uh, all of us have to do a dissertation uh, that would you know, result into a research project for your third year uh, degree. Um, I chose my research project uh, in India, but later on I got to know that there was an opportunity to go to Peru uh, at the place where the river Amazon originates uh, to do your research. Um, I immediately went to my supervisor and I said, uh, listen, I've already done my field work in India, but I still want to go to the Amazon. He said, no, 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 you can't go. You know, you've, you've already finished and uh, you know, we have very little funding. We can't fund you to go to there. Uh, I said, listen, I have like years of experience working on camera traps and I'm sure that you're, uh, you, know, you have camera traps there and you're uh, uh, working on Jaguars. I'm sure I can help in some or the other way. Um, fortunately, I could convince him and he said, okay, fine, you know, uh, we'll take you along, but you really have to work hard. It's like, absolutely. Uh, so finally, I was off uh, and that's the first picture I took of the Amazon River uh, from an airplane. Um, we had to land in this small city called as Iquitos, which has no uh, land route. You have to land uh, there, uh, the airplane has to land in water. Um, and uh, it was quite uh, intimidating at first. Uh, the Amazon, incidentally, is, uh, according to discharge, just by the volume of water, greater than the next seven rivers combined. So you can imagine how big that river could be. Um, and it has a very huge basin as well. Most people think that the Amazon originates in Brazil and uh, everything to do with the Amazon is in Brazil, but actually the Amazon originates in Peru. Uh, right, so I stayed on that thing for over six months. Uh, uh, in, that's, that's our research vessel deep in the Amazon. Um, I mean, at, at first I was like, what am I doing? You know, why am I on this boat for months together? Uh, we used to get, uh, you know, we were land sick, you know, because the, uh, the, 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 that little boat was anchored at one place for a really, really long time. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, we used to stay on that, cook on that, uh, do our research on that, every morning go uh, in, in the mornings in the forest to look for, uh, you know, different species that we would encounter. Uh, this would be our early morning scenes. Every mo early morning we would wake up to scenes like this. Uh, sipping coffee for breakfast and there would be a group of macaws that would fly by. So I was totally living my dream. Uh, very, very weird looking frogs that I had never seen before. That's a clown frog. Uh, and very weird looking birds as well. That's a bird called the Hoadzin, which uh, lives in the Amazon, uh, in, 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 in the entire region. Um, also, some of my, uh, you know, co colleagues were working on crocodiles. Uh, the, the crocodiles over there are called caimans, you know, uh, and that's a black caiman, and they would they would put in a pipe inside its mouth and feed uh, it with lots of water, and then after a certain point, just invert the you know caiman and like shake it as if, uh, you know, it's like some dumping bag. What the cro the caiman would do is puke out the remains of its stomach and they would collect the puke and determine what the caiman is eating. So it was, uh, the research was on uh, what the caimans are eating and how that uh, sort of affects their breeding biology. Uh, at first I was like, oh my God, like, you know, what is this dealing with puke and uh, all of this? But later on I found out that it has immense value in research because they found that the, the, the caimans are eating a certain kind of fish that was uh, getting depleted day by day due to overfishing in that landscape. Um, that's how we would walk, you know, with almost knee deep of water sometimes. Uh, and every time I would step foot in the Amazon, uh, in, in the rainforest, there would be like a swarm of mosquitoes that would surround me. So you could not get into that landscape without some or the kind of DEET or like insecticide on you. Uh, really unhealthy, but if, if you didn't have it, you would, you would probably get eat, like, you know, eaten alive by mosquitoes. Um, so my research basically looked at how during the flooding season, uh, large mammals like, and especially big cats like jaguars, uh, you know, how, how do they uh, move around in the entire landscape when the entire area is flooded? So 
in the Amazon, uh, you know, it's very different. The landscape is very different from India or Africa, where you could see through the forest for over, you know, 10 meters, 15 meters. Over there, you have visibility of like one meter. The, a jaguar might be sitting right next to you, and you wouldn't know about it. So there was, it was impossible to actually see animals, uh, you know, while walking. So. That's where ecologists or biologists use these devices called as camera traps. Now, camera trap is a, a very interesting device where uh, you would attach a camera, it's a, it's a remote camera that gets triggered by infrared rays, uh, on two sort of, uh, you know, uh, substrates on, uh, on a road. Uh, and any animal that crosses the camera, the camera gets triggered and takes a picture of that animal. So we get to know what kinds of animals there are, uh, what are the densities of the animal, what are the abundances of the animal, and then you know do some statistical modeling to find out how the animals are doing, how how are they spatially uh, distributed throughout the landscape. So that's me putting a camera trap, um, and. At night, when you know when animals would move and we'd check uh, camera traps, we would get these really interesting pictures. So this is a animal called as a tapir uh, that's found only in the Amazon rainforest and in Malaysia, but that's a different species you get there. Uh, that's a puma, okay. And when I saw this picture for the first time, I was like, uh, it was 11:30 a.m. Uh, and this picture was clicked at 11:27 a.m. So uh, we, you know that puma was right around us at, at that point. So we were pretty thrilled. That's a jaguar. Okay, so uh, we were, you know, we were very lucky to get about 56 different individuals in a span of about four to five months in that landscape, and we found out through our research that uh, jaguars in that region, where during flooding season, would converge onto these small islands because all the other prey, prey species, uh, like what they prey on, like the tapir, there is a red brocket deer, uh, armadillos, also would come into these little islands that would form. So, uh, in in like a small size of about 50 square kilometers, you could find up to 10, 20 to 12 different jaguars, uh, which was pretty cool. But uh, that was not, uh, you know, what sort of uh, made me uh, change my career path a little and study humans rather than animals. When I, uh, when I first saw this, this, that's a bullet cartridge in, in the Amazon. I, I was shocked. I was like, oh, you know what, there are hunters here, there are poachers here, like what's happening? Um, uh, I was very surprised. So I went into the markets, you know, I, I made friends with uh, a, a local cop and I told him that, you know, I want to go undercover and I want to find out what's happening and I want to take these pictures of, you know, these people selling, uh, uh, you know, uh, animal products. That's a lot of monkey meat, okay? And, and monkey meat is a local delicacy over there. Uh, when I saw that for the first time, I cringed. I was like, what? These people eat monkeys, they look like us and, and, and they're eating like, uh, you know, these things and I was, I was judging them totally. Uh, later on, I found out that I was very wrong because uh, this is a practice that has existed for a very, very long time. Uh, and eating animals in the Amazon, or, or forget the Amazon, even in India, uh, is a very normal thing, and 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 there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, so not just not just monkey meat, you know, they would eat, they, they would make these, uh, you know, uh, skins out of anaconda skin. Uh, a large catfish stuff, then there's, uh, there's caiman skin over there. So uh, a lot of animals were being used okay, for, for different purposes. This was slightly problematic because this was more of a commercial purpose. This is for, uh, you know, especially uh, foreign tourists coming and, you know, when they, when they see something that exotic, they're like, oh, I, I want to get this. And when they land up in uh, uh, Washington DC airport, they get go into jail because international trade does not allow uh, them to carry something like that. Uh, but that's what sort of drives uh, markets like these. So those are skulls of monkeys as well. That's a howler monkey, a capuchin monkey, another howler monkey, um, uh, which you know local uh, Kokama tribals. There's, there's a tribal community over there called uh, the Kokamas. Uh, there are about only 10 to 15 thousand of them left in the world. Okay, so they are they are a threatened uh, tribe as well. Uh, they they regularly hunt uh, monkeys and other animals for their daily requirements. Uh, because, uh, you know, over there agriculture is not possible and they don't get uh, uh, the dietary requirement of protein uh, comes from uh, bushmeat hunting, and b which is very normal because they don't seem to be having a very large effect on the ecology or the environment because they themselves are a part of the ecosystem. The problem is uh, when something like this happens, okay, this is, uh, you know, I, I found, uh, you know, in a very dingy corner um, uh, of a market in uh, Iquitos, 
where uh, a jaguar skin was kept and i really wanted to go in there and find out like you know what the prices are and uh, who what drives this trade uh, that was very risky because uh, 5 minutes later i had like 10 people with machetes uh, running behind me and i had to take uh, you know take police protection um, but i found out that uh, something like that sells for just around 20 to 40 dollars locally the same thing if it would you know was marketed in america or in china that would sell for about $40,000. So you see uh, like how end user markets uh, are driving trades like this. So you know, at that point when I was speaking to this fellow, uh, I, I, you know, I judged him there like you know, this is the guy who's doing the hunting. But later on when I, when I did a res little research on this and I found out the, the chain, the market chain and how it actually results into driving forces to kill uh, rare wildlife, I found out that the people who consume these things are the problem. Um, at one point, uh, while, you know, just when I was back and sitting uh, in, a, in a small town, just having coffee in the evening, I saw uh, a, a, a small canoe coming from uh, the forest. Uh, there were four or three or four kokamas in there with two little kids. And uh, they, uh, they just came up to me and started crying, you know, obviously in Latin American Spanish. And I couldn't speak Latin American Spanish at that point. I could understand a little bit of it. Um, they were crying because uh, they just lost their entire uh, family uh, murdered by uh, goons of an oil and natural gas uh, sort of an organization which are doing exploration in the Amazon. Uh, when I read around a little about that, I found out that uh, it was an organization that was based in the United States of America, uh, which would drill for oil for requirements on consumers in, in America and elsewhere. Uh, we don't really realize these things that uh, what, a, what is the kind of effect that we as consumers have on, on local communities and on wildlife uh, far from where we live. Uh, and I would like to end with that, that I, you know, I lived my childhood dream, but also realized a lot many things that I didn't. Okay, thanks.